Welcome. This is the Algebra 1 uh, practice test 2, or EOC practice test 2. Question number 48. The question says, which graph best represents the system of inequalities below? Now, the reality is you're most likely to graph using the calculator, which is totally fine, of course. Um, so the thing that you're going to have to do in this problem is change a couple of them from standard form to slope-intercept form. My voice is dying, so I apologize. Um, the reality is, the first one says y is less than 4. That's fine. The calculator says y equals on it, um, and I'll bring it up just to make a point about the fact that it does. So if you lose your mind about graphing, just look right there. It says y equals. So as long as you get y by itself, that slope-intercept form, and it should be fine. So the first one up here is A-OK. -okay. The problem starts when I have to look at the uh, the second one, because it's in standard form. It says 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 6. So I've got 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 6. Now I need to move that 3x over, or eliminate it on the left side and uh, do the same thing on the right side. Then I need to get y by itself by dividing by 2. So what I'm going to do here is draw a line. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Those cancel. Bring down that 2y because you didn't really use it. Bring down your less than equal to. And then you end up with negative 3x plus 6. You cannot combine 3x and 6. They're different. They're not like terms in the sense that like you can keep adding as many apples to a uh, basket full of oranges as you want, but the number of oranges does not increase. So x and uh, the 3x term here and the 6 are not like terms, so you just rewrite them. Now I need to divide by 2 on this side, and I have to do it to both terms on this side, because now that I have two unlike terms, I need to divide by 2 for all of them. So I end up with y, and since this is positive, by the way, I do not need to flip over that inequality. That might be a good visual tool to use, just to circle that 2. If it's negative 2, I do have to flip the inequality to become greater than. But in this case, it stays the same. Now, uh, negative 3 divided by 2, it's easier just to write it as negative 3 over 2 x, and then 6 divided by 2 gives me plus 3. So now it's in slope-intercept form. So I can rewrite it up here next to it. y is less than or equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 3. So that one's ready to go now. Uh, the last one is also in standard form, but it's not nearly as much of a production to move around. You have x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to draw my line. I need to move x over. The relationship is a plus minus one, so I'm going to subtract it. Same thing over here. We talked a second ago about how you can't uh, combine unlike terms. In this case, these are these two are unlike terms. <coughs> Sorry, I had to cough there. Um, so we end up with negative x plus 2. There is no division at all here. We just did a subtraction. So we don't need to flip the sign over. So don't circle this. You only flip it over if it's a multiply or divide in the last step. That's the only time you worry about. Otherwise, just leave it alone. So this one becomes y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. Now, we're ready to graph in the calculator because everything matches up to what the calculator requires us to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, bring it up real fast. And then I'm going to put 4 in here. Um, the reality is I can either do it directly and graph it in the calculator or uh, T, uh, Texas Instruments, if you happen to have a TI, has an app that just does uh, inequalities. So I'll just, you won't have 800 million programs for yourself, but if you do have the, uh, the cable that will allow you to upload this app, it's pretty cool. And I went way past it, of course, because that's just the way things are going today. There it is. The one that's in, in equals. You can get something similar to this for yourself. And it opens it up. And now I can graph with all the inequality symbols. Now, I'm not going to do that for this one just because a lot of people don't have access to it. Or maybe you're not using a TI and it kind of kills the whole mood of everything. So um, I would go back and turn it off. I'm just not going to use these as all, at all. I'm going to show you how to do it without them. So just pretend they're not there. Um, so when I do y is less than negative 4, I need to click over to where this little arrow flips up and down. Click enter a few times, and that gives me less than. So now it says y is less than uh, or equal to negative 4. I need to remember in my head that the line underneath uh, means that I have a solid line. If this was not a line underneath it, I wouldn't have a solid line. I'd look for dotted lines. And often, <coughs> sorry to cough again, um, and often, 
you'll end up with problems that you can just get the answer just by whether it's solid or dotted. Now the reality is unless you're using the uh, app that they give you, it won't tell you whether it's dotted or solid. You have to pay attention to which one comes out first because they graph in the order that you write them in. Now for the next one, it's a less than because y is less than here. So I can click enter about three times. That shows less than. And now I'm just going to write in the negative I'm going to put in parentheses, negative 3 over 2. Your calculator might do fractions. I don't know. Mine didn't take the negative there. Sorry about that. Negative 3 over 2x plus 3. And my last one, I'm going to go ahead and type in the negative x plus 2. Then I need to go back, and this is a greater than question. So I'm going to hit enter a couple times. And that shows greater than. So I'm going to graph these. And I'm going to look for the point where they're all are falling in together. So it'll actually be the darkest section. It's a section that's sort of uh, filled in the most. So based on what I can tell, the part that has the most in it is right in here. So it's just a little sliver of information. And if I look at my answer choices, which is easier said than done, let me click this thing out of the way. I can see that the only one that gives me that little sliver of information would be D. So I can say that my answer is indeed D. And it makes a lot of sense. You know what Y is less than 4 looks like. And so it's somewhere in here. Uh, the Y is negative X plus 2. It sort of goes up. So this is that one. Right there it goes up and this one goes down. So that little section where they all cross over, that's your intersection point. That's how you do systems of equations. That's how you get the answer for question number 48 on practice test 2. Good luck.